Exodus chapter 13, verse 17. And it bears witness with the scripture that was read, read in Acts chapter 7. And verse 17. Then came the pass, when Pharaoh had let the people go, that God did not lead them by the way of the Philistines, although that was near. For God said, at least perhaps the people should change their minds when they see war and return into Egypt. And God led the people around by the wilderness of the Red Sea. And the children of Israel went up and ordered the land out of the land of Egypt. And Moses took the bones of Joseph, which was with him, and he had placed the children of Israel on the soul of the altar. God was surely visit you, and you should carry up my bones from with you. So then the journey from Sychar and the encamp in Ephraim at the edge of the wilderness. And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead them away. And at night a pillar of fire to give them light. So as to go by the day and the night. And he did not take away the pillar of the cloud by day or the pillar of fire by night from between the people before the people. And I want to just back up to uh, verse 17 with them, excuse me, verse 18. So God led the people around the way of the wilderness of the Red Sea. Today's message, the title of today's message is the, the Red Sea. And while the Lord gave me the Red Sea, and right now we're in very trying times. Uh, when you look at the news, the uh, stock markets, people are, are going out of business that you would have never thought would have been out of business. And these last days, my brothers and sisters, a lot of things is in chaos. People living like they want to live. And almost anything goes. It reminded me a couple of years ago, I think it was in the state of Alabama. They threw out the Ten Commandments from out of the courthouse. And that was a sign right there. And, and all of the hurricanes. And all of the floods that's going on, God is still trying to warn his people. But this morning, my brothers and sisters, I, I have good news. And, and I have to move Israel this morning because Israel was in an Egyptian bondage. And, and at that time, Egypt represented sin. And at that time, King Pharaoh represented Satan. So the children of Israel, they was in bondage. And, and the Bible said that when they rose up, Moses, to, to go help God's people, God said, I, I heard their cry. And I know this morning there's been some people that's been praying for many different reasons. And I want to let you know this morning that God hears your cry. Yes. Yes. There's people that's been praying for family members that's out in the world. And God hears your cry. Yes. Some yes. people don't know if they're going to make it through school. But this morning, I just want to know, let you know that God, he, he hears your cry. Yes. There's, there's people, same people that, that are still bound up in different habits. And, and I know that they want to live right, but oh, Satan won't let them go. You're saying these people in Israel was God's first chosen people. So, so whatever it is that's in your way this morning, I don't want you to feel bad. I just came to let you know that help is on the way. Yeah. I don't know about y'all, but like the choir was singing and around and around and around and again and again and again. And I keep saying, Lord, deliver me out of this, but then I keep saying and again and again. He said, I heard how people cry out, and you know King Pharaoh, he was he was stubborn. But you see, King Pharaoh was stubborn because at that time for us the pagans, though, he was all of that. King Pharaoh was the first mighty warrior that was on earth at that time. King Pharaoh had the greatest army that, that you can ever imagine. There was nobody at that time that could beat King Pharaoh. When children of Israel started out remembering the Egyptians, and, and King Pharaoh.
Lord don't say, well, I got to do something about that because they may already outnumber us. One day they might want to jump us. Yeah. One day they might want to play war against us. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so God knew what King Pharaoh would do. Just like when we're in sin and we want to come out of sin, God understands our situation. Yes. Yes. And it's yes. not just the hidden sins or the open sins, but it's the sins that we can't tell nobody. God, God understands, but he just let you know that he's came to he came to make a way. The Red Sea, why did he use the Red Sea? Because God wanted to show you a situation that seemed like there was no way out. He wanted to show you a situation that seemed like nobody could help you. He yes, had your back yes. up against the wall. He yes. just wanted to let you know when there's no help, he is a way maker. Yes. The Red Sea, yes. I just want to talk about the Red Sea for a minute. The Red Sea was, was 100 miles wide. The distance from the city of Tallahassee going to Lake City, Florida is 106 miles. I, I just want to let you see how far it was. Yes. And then the Bible say that the Red Sea was 1,320 miles long. That's the distance from Tallahassee going all the way down to the Keys. That was a real long river or ocean to try to get over. And the Bible said that it was 7,200 feet deep. And not only that, 7,200 feet deep. And the storm was raging. The, the waves were like a gentle pond, but the waves was raging. And, and the king Pharaoh, he still went that he, he still went that Israel go. So what I'm trying to show you is the Egyptians that was chasing Israel, and, and Israel came to the Red Sea and they stopped. How many people ever felt that you stuck in your situation? How many people say, but I had faith, but just nothing happened? Yeah. How many people say, I believed in God, and he just forsake me, not leave me, but I, Lord, you know, it was just one situation, I needed help in, and, and he just didn't help me. Uh -huh. I know I have felt that way sometimes, but I came to let you know that we was wrong. Yeah. And God is going to see us.
He couldn't go into the land of milk and honey. But that was a sign. You see, God gives us signs, that, and God bears witness when his signs come to pass. Way before the journey started, he told Moses, on this rock, you will serve me. So that was God, that was Moses' confirmation of what he was supposed to do. He was not supposed to go to the promised land. But my brothers and sisters, whatever it is that you're going through, whatever it is that your Red Sea is, think of how mighty God is. Think about how big that Red Sea is. And, and Moses raised up the rod by faith. And, and the Bible says a strong wind came from the east and it parted the Red Sea. And you know how sometimes how it rain outside and you go outside and walk out there, rain is mud after that. You know how sometimes well, there's a swamp and it dry up there, there is mud. Man. But when he parted the Red Sea, the children of Israel didn't get no mud on their shoes. Oh, my God knows how to take care of us. The children of Israel were walking as a million people went, and the Red Sea had parted it, and they had dry land. You know, my brothers and sisters, like, I, I thought about that for a minute. We used to take a trip in the Bahamas, and the Bahamas, they got this underground uh, aquarium, and when you go down there, it's maybe 10, 15 feet tall, and you can see whales swimming, and you can see sharks swimming and everything. I can imagine what Israel was thinking, the, the Red Sea, how deep it is, uh, sharks on the left and sharks on the right, and they're walking through the trail. I, I know they had to be like scared a little bit. You see everything that's in there. And you know some of us like, oh Lord, what if there's me? <laughs> Tell God. Yeah. 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 
prophet said, King Pharaoh had the greatest army that's around him. And what God is showing us is that sometimes we don't know how to fight like we think we do. Yeah. Like Peter, when Peter said, Lord, I never deny you. And, and see, Peter didn't know how to fight like he thought he did. But, but once Peter learned how to fight, he said, who do man say that I am? And he said that some say John the Baptist, some say an old prophet that has arisen. Some say maybe Elijah. And then he turned to Peter and he said, well, who do you say that I am? Come on now. This morning, Jesus Christ is asking all of y'all that. Who do you say that I am? Somebody may be able to say that he's a bridge over troubled water. Somebody may be able to say that he's my beginning. He is my end. Somebody might be able to say that he's my alpha and he's my omega. Somebody may look at the message chapter and say he's my God. Yeah. <laughs> 